So uh, I will just warn you a little bit on beforehand that this class can can be quite a workout. If uh, and if you feel like you have to go a little bit slower, take it easy. Just skip some of it. Right? Um, this is something I've never actually like taught before or talked about, but it's something I've been doing in my role as teaching jujitsu for at least like I've been teaching for 20 years. But I think the last 15 years I've been doing these the same these drills a lot in my classes and um, I've, for a long time I've been thinking maybe I should kind of tell someone about it because I think it works pretty well you know I've, I've been I've been I do this every time I teach a class I I, I I cycle through these drills all the time and let people do it and uh, but I've never really explained it or told it told it to anyone else but anyone who's been training with me has been doing these drills a lot uh, like like way too much but um, and I think it's kind of interesting because it's it's um, it's uh, there's, there's no technique involved. It's uh, and it's it's kind of the the main part of my my classes at home, um, and um, they involve no part of me teaching any techniques or any details. I think, at least for myself, as I talked about in my other class, um, for myself usually I have I have a list on my fridge, and there's usually two or three things on this list, and that's what I work on for at least a year. So every time I roll, I have like two or three things that I try. And I try nothing else but this, and I try to pull it off on as many people as possible. And once a year, or maybe two years have passed with this one move, then I cross it off the list and I put something new on it. And it might seem like uh, that's not a lot, right? but, uh, but if, you can, if you train for 10 years, and suddenly you have 20, 30 moves that you can pull off on almost everyone. And jiu-jitsu is really like a slow game. It just takes a long, long time to learn. Um, and I think personally, I know that we're doing quite the opposite this week, which is just like a ton of technical input. But when I like to teach jiu-jitsu, at least for, for, my, for, for those who I train with on a regular basis, there's, literally, there's very little like technical input. It's a lot of work, and then I, I, I come with a few adjustments or a, f a little bit of input or a little like try this or maybe add this little thing but like 80 90 percent of it it just it's just kind of work you just kind of have to play the game and play uh, some specific games to learn how to do these things i mean it's it's just wrestling at the end of the day it's just like grappling right? this and then you don't need to learn that by by acquiring 2000 techniques right? um literally what you just have to do a lot is just play the game right um, and um, I feel like there's a lot of things that you have to be really good at in, in jiu-jitsu or in, in grappling or in wrestling or whatever aspect of this you're doing, MMA, self-defense, competition, points, anything. Just like some fundamental things that you have to be really good at, like a foundation that you need to build, which is not necessarily like technical, which is not like knowing a lot of details, which you must do because this is like a, a high information sport. Like whenever something's happening, you need to analyze really quick and kind of crunch a lot of data and, and know a lot of solutions and, and kind of understand the, the full like flow chart of everything that's happening in a, in a split second. But, but really the main thing that, that you cannot learn from just being fed with technique is stuff like uh, timing, balance, strength in the right direction. And, uh, and, and these are things that, that are not technical, but you get those by just playing the game. And often you just roll, like you, you train, you. You practice some techniques and then you roll and it's just like a whatever play play the full game but i think there are some some specific kind of isolated drills that i do a lot that i i find have, have worked exceptionally well for for at least for my students and um and as i said i've been doing these exact same drills uh, in my class for at least like 10 15 years and um and i sometimes i will do it a lot sometimes i'll do it just a little bit like uh 10 minutes each class like as a warm-up and sometimes, like for instance, now we have uh, one drill. One of these drills we're going to do today is what we do every single Saturday, and we do nothing else for like an hour every Saturday, and that's a six-month project. Uh, just that drill. There's no technique. I teach nothing. I will give a little bit of input and a little bit of few adjustments and stuff, but we just we just work on that for one hour every Saturday for six months. That's the that's the drill right now. And um, when I when I lived in uh, in Copenhagen. Uh, and I was teaching training six days a week, which I don't do anymore. We had like a competition team. We had Tuesday, Thursday, we did one of these drills, usually like for 45 minutes, Tuesday, Thursday, and that was the workout. 
nothing else. There was no like technique or anything, that was just the work. And the same with um, when I had my kids class, I, I did like a super competitive kids class at one point. They were like uh, 12 to 15 and they did nothing but compete. The entire training, they were probably the most successful kids team in Scandinavia at that point. And they won everything. I only taught them one, one choke, like a cross choke for mount, and the rest was just one of these drills. And, uh, and, and we just did it for one hour, like five days a week. There was nothing else with that. I mean, there was probably, from, a, uh, like a, from some perspective, that might be a very boring training, but these kids absolutely wrecked everyone in competition. We did nothing but this one drill and then just one technique. Yeah? And uh, they were not like super technical jiu-jitsu players, but they had like incredible like work, power, uh, like uh, balance and timing, which they just got from doing this stuff. And it's really simple. There's n like nothing magic to it. Maybe that's also why I never ta taught it to anyone or I never like kind of talked about it because I feel like, oh, it's, it's really not much to it, right? But now I'm doing this six months Saturday project at home where it's just one drill. I was thinking, yeah, maybe I should talk about this. Um, so it's a handful of drills. And uh, as I said, it's kind of hard work. And in the beginning, it's really, really hard like, to do it. But then as you just keep doing it every single training, then it becomes easier and it actually starts to become fun. Right? But the first time you do it, usually it's, it's, it's pretty exhausting. Right? I love it. I actually started doing this with, with the, with, um, when I started doing it with the kids, that's why I started doing it, because they were like, they have unlimited cardio they, and they don't complain. Like, <laughs> I, I had a team of kids who did not complain. Because they were like, okay, if you want to be on this, this class, you have to compete every single weekend, pretty much. And we train five days a week, and if you can't do it, you're not on the kids' team. That was a little bit, a little bit tough, but, but they loved it. So um, that was kind of the, the thing we had going with that kids' team. And, and um, I started doing this drill like 10 minutes every class, then 20 minutes, then like 30 minutes. It's like, fuck it, this is all we're going to do for an hour. Every, you just show up, do this drill for an hour, go home, and then we compete in the weekends. That was like the, that was like the routine for, for years. Um, and then I tried it with the, with the adults. I, I remember one Monday I did like just 15 minutes of this drill and nobody showed up on Wednesday. They were all like, oh. <laughs> like they were all done. Um, and they all complained, oh, it's too hard. Why don't we just like talk about some Hilahima hooks or something? <laughs> like, it's too hard work. But you know, we just got in a rhythm. And then actually after a very short time, then I found out I could have the grown-ups do this as well for like half an hour every training and then do some technical stuff. And it was still kind of, they would just stop complaining at some point, it would be fun. Um, so I've done that ever since. And, um, and uh, I do it, uh, as I said, every single class, pretty much. Ever. So um, it's pretty much, um, I have like three themes of, of drills and there's two each. And it's, it's, uh, there's no technique involved, it's just a set of rules and then we just play it. Um, and I'm gonna go try to go through it, it's like, uh, Top versus bottom, which are skills that you need to be very good at in jiu-jitsu. Uh, it's guard, that's, which is something you cannot be without. And then it's kind of wrestling style, right? which is also something that you must be very good at in jiu-jitsu. Um, I have a few extra which are like competition specific, but I think we're going to skip them today. You, you're going to die. We're not going to do seven drills today. Um, so we'll just do the first one, which I use a lot also as a warm-up drill. Um, instead of doing gymnastics, I usually do this like five minutes top, five minutes bottom, and then people are warm. And of course, do a little bit of stretching and moving first, but, but that's usually it. I, can I use it? And the drill is really simple. As I said, there's really not much to, to explain in this, uh, in this class. It's just, okay, you stand up. Okay, first drill is this. In the beginning, I let people do it for like five minutes top, five minutes bottom, and then with time, we usually do 15 minutes top, 15 minutes bottom, and that's the warm up of the class, right? And it's fairly simple. You know, when you play guard, sometimes um, the defense of your guard is kind of, the way you learn to defend the guard is, is kind of, you just learn a lot of attacks. Like you just learn a lot of techniques in the guard, sweeps and submissions. And then you play a lot, play the game a lot, and then eventually, you kind of figure out how to not get, have your guard passed. Of course, there's some kind of technical input to it, but, but that's usually how it happens. People are good at defending the guard because they just roll for, for years and people try to pass their guard. But sometimes you, you, uh, your guard does not work. You know, like someone is, is, will kill all your, your attacks and then it's very important that you kind of have a solid foundation for defending the guard. Um, so this is why I do this drill a lot because it really just, peels everything away and it focuses on nothing else but just defending the guard. Um, if, you do, if I don't do this drill, I feel like 
my guard is like a fortress built only of cannons. Right? And if I don't shoot people before they get there, there's no wall to protect it. Right? So the drill is fairly simple. My opponent can try to pass my guard, and I can do nothing but defend my guard. Nothing else. No sweeps, no submission. I just try to defend the guard what, with whatever it takes. Right? I cannot sweep. I cannot submit. I just defend the guard. Right? That's fairly simple. That's it. It's quite a bit of a workout when, when you do it, and it will teach you two things, I find. One is that on bottom, you really have a focus like only on the defensive part, which is sometimes the moment you start to attack with something, your, your defense is your attack. But once you meet someone who's better and they just kind of cancel your attacks, then you really need something to fall back to. Right? And also on top, it'll teach you to, to just fucking like push and grind to pass the guard all the time, because there's no break. You just have to go. There's, He's not waiting for you to do anything else. Uh, so let's just try this drill for a few minutes. Top, I'll tell you when to switch. And um, that's it. 15 minutes top, 15 minutes bottom, usually. That's the warm-up drill. But uh, let's try this first and you just get a feel for it. You cannot sweep, you cannot submit, you can just defend the guard. Okay, let's go. All right, so as you can see, that's, that was only a few minutes each. But it's a pretty decent workout, both top and bottom, right? And uh, I mean, this is a sport. It's supposed to be a workout anyway. So if you can slowly build up this drill, uh, you, everyone can learn to do this for a long time. And where I really found that, that kind of, where you really get to be super comfortable at defending the guard with this, from this drill, is when you do it for a very long time. I, I almost like try to make the, the, the class reach like a meditative, meditative state. If you can go for a very, very long time. It takes some practice because in the beginning you like tense up like crazy. But if you can go for half an hour and someone's just pounding your guard and you can relax on bottom and not panic, that will teach you some very valuable skills in terms of defending the guard, right? And you don't need anyone to feed you techniques like every, every 30 minutes and to teach you something, some new move. Just do this work. That's pretty much it, right? And uh, I had a good long period where we did like three, four months and every class was just 50 minutes top, 50 minutes bottom, 50 minutes top, 50 minutes bottom, that's one hour. And if, if you can kind of build up that cardio and, and the, 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 the technique, then your, your guard defense will, will be very solid. And I just based that on having done that with a lot of people. So I think that works really well. Very simple. Anyone can do that. You don't need, a, you don't need technique. You don't need an instructor. Right? So you just, if, you, if you don't know what to do or you don't want to practice like 10 new techniques every training, just grab someone, set the timer, 15 minutes top, 15 minutes bottom, and uh, that's a good guard, right? The next one is really, I find that to be even harder. I'm uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> this one was an easy one. Um, so the next one is the same, but we just change it up a little bit. Bottom person can try to sweep and submit, and top person can do nothing but defend. That's it. That is really, really a hard drill. But uh, let's try it, and you will see it. Right? And I'll just give you a few minutes top bottom, but imagine doing this for like 10, 20 minutes each. Right? OK, so let's try that. Go. So that's pretty simple, right? And these two drills are literally like 90% the foundation of everything I do to teach people how to have a good guard and a good guard passing. That's it. And then now and then we will add, throw in a little technique or some adjustments or try this or make sure you don't make this mistake. But primarily it, everything evolves around just drilling stuff like this. And uh, it, again, imagine if, if you just, if let's say now it's January, if we meet again in six months, if I meet two of you again in six months, one of you is just acquiring new techniques every single training. You're just watching YouTube and practicing the moves in the guard, sweep, passing, submission. And the other person is doing nothing but this one hour, three days a week, right? Just these drills. Obviously, it's kind of a silly situation, but it's kind of obvious that the, if you, the person who put in, put in the most work will have the best result. Pretty much, right? Of course, you need some technique and some some input, but it's really not that much. Right? If you just do this drill all the time, then I find that's the best way for me to teach someone to have a good guard, good passing. Right? And um, so that's pretty much it for guard, right? So if you don't know what to do for the next ten years or something, right? Just spend like half an hour or even ten minutes every every train. I guess every train start five minutes top, five minutes bottom. If you're lazy, if you if you have a little bit more. Uh, uh, Energy, you do like half an hour, and that's it. Then you still have a good hour of talking about technique or details or rolling or something, right? But, but I think these, these are some 
this will force you to be in some, some situations that you will only experience for very short periods of time if you're, you're just rolling, right? Like having your guard really pressure past when, 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 you, when there's so much pressure that you can't even attack, that's like super, super important skill, especially for competition or something. When you get in trouble, then you have to rely on falling back on like your, the, the walls of your castle, not just your guns, right? Um, those are the guard drills. So then I do two drills for, uh, for top versus bottom, which is like escaping and, and holding top, which is also obviously something you need to be really good at. And uh, the drills are really, really simple. Um, I'm use uh, so side control. I will just kind of can you, my black belt side, please. Um, so the first one is super simple. You just pick uh, uh, a position. So maybe it's a theme. Maybe you say, okay, this week is this position. Next week is next, another position. Or um, you just kind of let them pick a random position they like, like a random top position for every time you switch part. Right. And let's say side control, and the drill is really simple. I grab the position, and it's, I call it the squeeze and hold. All I have to do is squeeze and hold the position for as long as possible, and he will try to get out. That's pretty much it. Eventually, you, he will probably get out. If he gets out, then we start over, right? If he does not get out, then he's stuck there for two minutes or something. But it is what it is, right? This is a super important skill. When you have a position, you must be able to fucking hold it for your dear life. Kind of like judo wrestling style pin. And you really need that for competition or for MMA or whatever. Once you have a position, you should not... Of course, transitioning is super important, but it's also a really important skill to be able to just squeeze and hold and never let him out, right? Sometimes you roll with someone who's too energetic or they're too strong or you're tired, and then you just need to hold them really tight for a while so they cannot move, and then they get tired enough so you can handle them later, right? So let's say if it's side control, I just go here, and then we just say one, two, three, go, and I try to stay here and not change position or anything for as long as possible, and he will try to get up. Right? Yeah, we did. Don't have to. Nice escape. So let's just do it with the random position. So you grab a partner, and uh, you pick any position you want, any any dominant position you like, and you just say one, two, three, go, and you hold it for as long as you can. And if the person gets out, you just start over, back to the same position. Right? Just throw in as many minutes as possible in, in, in that situation. It's not really nice for the bottom. It's not really a fun drill for the bottom person. Right? Because sometimes we go five minutes top, five minutes bottom, and you just cannot escape, and you're just stuck for five minutes. But then it's just kind of like mental training. You know? Just kind of find your happy place. <laughs> um, so you get to pick the position today, and I will do short rounds, maybe one minute or two minutes. I tell you to switch, other person on top, and then I tell you to grab a new partner and then you find a new position, okay? But again, short rounds, but usually I would let people go really long rounds, maybe 10 minutes or something. 10 minutes mount top, 10 minutes mount bottom. Then you really have to find your, your happy place if you get stuck under some big guy for, for <laughs> half an hour in mount. Okay, let's try it out, go. So that's pretty simple, right? You can easily do that for an entire training. No problem, right? Just pick a new position every round and squeeze. Or just pick one position, do that for an hour and a half. It won't be time wasted, I promise you. It's like, that's, that's some serious work you put in. And just do that twice a week or something, and that will give you some really solid top and escape uh, skills. Right? And of course, you need to learn some actual techniques to how to get out and stuff. But that's the job of the instructor to kind of feed that a little bit here and there. Um, now, the next one is, is kind of the same, but um, it's really, literally just top versus bottom. One person picks the top position just like before and is now allowed to transition between top positions. So you just try to stay on top. If the bottom person escapes, you start over, back on top. Right? And escape, I mean pull half guard, pull guard, stand up, roll, or whatever. Right? If you're not in the top position anymore, then you reset, you go back to the top position. So the bottom person is actually going to be in full misery nonstop for the entire drill, right? Every time you escape, you get back on bottom. Um, and again, we just do short rounds, but with time, I, again, I, I really cannot emphasize how important I find it is that you, do, you practice doing longer and longer rounds. Like you have to find a meditative state where you can just 
be comfortable on bottom and on top for half an hour, no problem, okay? So let's try to grab someone again, and you pick a top position, and you're allowed to switch. Let's say you're in side control, you can go to knee and belly, you can go to mount, you can take the back, whatever. If the bottom person gets out in any way, like and half guard and guard included, then you just reset and start over, back to a top position, okay? Let's try it. Okay, so again, that's fairly simple, right? Anyone can do that. You don't need a certified black belt to hold the timer. You just get going, right? And I think those are super important drills uh, for uh, holding top and escaping, which are like fundamental skills that you must be very, very good at in jiu-jitsu. And it's hard work, but it's, it's a sport, right? Sometimes you get, with jiu-jitsu, I think that the thing with jiu-jitsu is it really gives room for you to be lazy because one, there's a, there's a culture of, uh, of course, it's a complicated sport. So you can quickly fall into the culture of, of this, you try to figure everything out. But, and then you can a little bit forget that most of it is just, you have to put in hard work, right? So I, I know jiu-jitsu attracts a lot of like uh, nerds, like myself. <laughs> Some of the most successful jiu-jitsu guys are often like programmers or something, like uh, we, we love to solve complex problems. And, uh, and uh, just, it's just that with, with a little bit more physical stress, right? And, um, but um, one thing that's, that really, I think one thing that, that really holds jiu-jitsu back from, from when you're training and, and allows you to be lazy is, is the guard, right? Because uh, sometimes you can get taken down, smashed, <coughs> but you can always like, okay, I'll just kind of play guard. I'll just be here and relax. And I don't really have to like, push the pace in any way. Um, so the next drill is, is probably my favorite and the one that I make people spend the most time on because it strips away everything in jiu-jitsu that, that allows you to be lazy. You cannot be lazy with the guard and it's, there's really nothing to it. And again, th this whole class is, that's why I never really tried. I feel like it's, it's nothing special, but we'll, we'll try. There's nothing, there's nothing kind of magical to it. But we just take the guard out of the game and then it's called Wrestling, usually, it's just wrestling. Um, and the, the, this drill is really simple, and this is the one I make people spend the most time on. It's also the hardest drill, I think, of all. Uh, but this is the one that my kids' class did an hour, five, five days a week. So if they can do it, like, you should be able to do it for five minutes. Um, and I think this is probably the most valuable drill that I make anyone do. This is the one where I see people get most out of it. Like, if I go through a long period of, let's say, a few months, or six months, or a year, and just do this drill every single class a little bit, I, I see like a huge effect in, in pretty much all the fundamental skills they need to be good at for jiu-jitsu, right? So we'll do the drill a little bit first. I'll explain it, we'll do it a little bit, and then I'll let you kind of experience it, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I think it's, it's super valuable, and then we're gonna try it again, right? And then you go home and do it for the next 10 years, hopefully. So the drill is super simple. We pick a starting position, and I kind of have like an escalation of starting positions. We start kind of simple, and you end up in a, in a, more, in a, in a situation that takes more energy to, for you to win. But the rules are really simple. All you have to do is, and it's like, it's just wrestling. All you have to do is pin the person's back on the mat for three seconds. <laughs> That's it. It's called wrestling or judo. <laughs> but in jiu-jitsu, we have the guard, so you can, uh, you can be lazy and be on your back, right? So, you cannot play guard like this. Then you're out. Right? Three seconds, one, two, three, you lose. So you have to, if you want to play guard, you have to sit up, right? Or attack a sweep or something, right? And we just start like this. Uh, turtle. Like this. And both, both guys can win in the same, the rules are the same for both of us. Just one start on top, one start on bottom, right? If I get his back on the map for three seconds, or you get my back on the map for three seconds, then we found the winner, then we start over, right? Apart from that, there are no rules, really. No submissions, right? That's just it, okay? So let's just try it first a little bit, and, uh, and then I'm gonna talk about the variations and then why I think this is a super good drill, right? Yes? No, no, I said both can win, both have the same rules, both can win. we just start in two different positions. Right? So he, if he gets out and puts my back on the mat, he wins. If I put his back on the mat, I win. Right? 
to make it on the top one. Yeah, so every time one person wins, you can switch the other person's on. Yeah? Okay? So uh, let's try it first and then we talk about it a little bit. All right, let's go. Obviously, we don't have a lot of time, and also, most of you are not conditioned to do this, right? Because in jiu-jitsu, you can be lazy and just talk about technique and pull guard, right? Um, but... Um, it's all those Jaeger bombs. Uh, so, as I said, my kids' team, for at least three years, we did nothing but this drill. And the way we do it is just kind of king of the hill, right? So there's maybe two or three couples in, and the winner stays in, and the loser go in the back of the line, and then we just rotate for like an hour, right? But with the grown-ups, with the adults, I usually do 20 minutes or maximum half an hour because we don't have unlimited cardio like the kids. <laughs> um, so the first way of starting this drill is usually in turtle because that's like kind of low position like this, right? And once people get more comfortable, I'll, I'll mix it up a little bit. Then the next one will be he, he's standing up. And I am just on my knees like this, right? One, two, three, go. Same drill. No, no, no. <laughs> Same thing, right? So now I have to actually kind of take him down, right? And uh, I like that a lot because it's like a starting with a connected takedown, right? And the, the last one is we just start go standing. One, two, three, go. Whoever gets the back pin on the mat. And we're just wrestling. Like, there's nothing to it, right? But it takes the, the, the lazy aspect out of jiu-jitsu. And um, <clears throat> so imagine... Now you just tried it for a few minutes. Um, I need time for the last one, which is the fun one. So imagine if you are really good at this drill, right? How do you get really good at that? You just do it a lot, right? Obviously there's a, some technical details to it and someone can teach you how to easily turn someone. You need to grab that elbow so they don't turn that way or you know, with the gi or without the gi, it's, it's, it's a, a few different things, but but generally, 90% of, of, of it is just you need to put in the time. Just do it, right? You just have to put in the time. So imagine you do this for a long time. Let's say you just do like half an hour, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, every single class for the next year, right? What are the skills you're going to acquire in jujitsu like terms? So, um, and I experiment a lot with this for my competition class. So what are the skills you're going to get really good at? You're going to get really good at putting someone's back on their mat and not getting your own back on the mat, right? And then um, we add one thing to the drill, is that you can win by either pinning, pinning the back on the mat, like this, three seconds. Obviously, there was a question, what if he's got my back? Uh, this is not a pin for me, like this, right? This is, I don't win here. So we add one thing, is you can win either by pinning or by taking the back with the hooks, like this. Hooks for three seconds. So there are two ways of winning, okay? So let's do it one more time just to try it out, and then we're gonna have the, the, the final little conversation about it. So you start here, both person can win in the same way, either by putting the back on the mat, or putting in the hooks, for three seconds, right? And the three seconds are super important. So if his back gets on the mat, and it's one, two, three, we keep going, right? It has, to, but gentleman rules, of course, right? No, no discussions on the mat, like. <laughs> So this is super important because I really need to pin him for three seconds and he needs to count. He can't just go up oh, back on the mat uh, and then give up now, right? No giving up until three seconds have passed. The same if I get the hooks. It's one, two, three before I win. So if it's one, two, two and a half, then we keep going, right? Super important detail. So uh, let's try the drill one more time. Try to find a new partner. Do it one more time and then we just wrap it up a little bit. Let's go. Okay, 
So this is really the, the key drill, I think, for building a solid, solid, solid foundation in jiu-jitsu. And then you add all the techniques on top of this, right? But if you're really, really good at this drill of winning by pinning three seconds or putting in the hooks for three seconds, you're pretty much good at everything you need to be good at in jiu-jitsu, not counting the guard, right? So um, imagine you do this for a long time and you get really good at this, it's, which is, again, really simple. All you have to do is just do the drill. You just need a few partners and you just set the timer and you go, right? So imagine you're really good at this. What are you good at in, in like, let's say it's a competition, right? If, if I want to do a takedown, right? Let's say I take my partner down in any way. It's like, uh, 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 I do a takedown, right? And this is competition. What do I need to do to get the points for the takedown? I need to keep him on his back for three seconds, right? That's what I have to do. So if I'm really good at this drill, I'm probably really good at making sure he doesn't get up. Right? What does he need to do if he gets taken down? Do not have points scored against him. Get his back off the mat before three seconds. Right? That's pretty much it. So imagine he spends a year doing this drill. It's really, really fucking difficult to pin his back on the mat. Right? I know because I, have, I make all my guys do this. Right? It's, a, it's a nightmare. Sometimes it's, you, you love this when you're like, oh, I do the takedown. It's like, oh, it's, it's done. Then it's not over. This is, if, with some, with the, especially the guys who did the competition class, who did this just like, two days a week, one hour, and did nothing else. When you get the takedown, that's when the, that's when the battle starts. Then it's like a five, five minute fight to keep them on their back, right? Because they're just conditioned to never let the back touch the mat, right? It's just, it's just resting, right? What if I pass the guard in competition? What if I pass the guard? How do I get the points? Top control, three seconds, right? What if he gets on his side like this? There's no points yet, right? Not until I have a proper top control with his back on the mat. I, unless he stops here and does nothing, then I'm not getting the points yet for the pass, right? So, drill will teach you the same. The moment you pass, you pin. Three seconds, if you're good at that, then you're good at passing the guard and finishing, right? If he does the drill a lot, he's good at the moment I pass, he's not gonna just let me pin it, right? What if he exposes his back in any way? What, what do I need to be good at? Get in the hooks for three seconds to get the points, right? So if that's just like a trigger reaction for me, because that's what I practice every single day, then I'm probably pretty good at putting in the hooks and getting you in. What if he exposes his back? What does he need to do to defend himself? Make sure I don't get two hooks in for three seconds, right? Because it's going to give me four points. So it's literally every fundamental skill that you have to be good at, just taking the guard out of this, is something you will learn by just doing this more and more and more. Just put in the hours, really. You cannot just sit down and read your way to it. There's no book about this, right? It's, it's like 90% hard work, and then you have to add in some, some, some uh, technique, right? Um, so I really recommend this, and this is the one I, I spend the most time on with everyone, pretty much, and then I add a little bit of technique. If I try to teach something, if, if I try to teach something new at every class three times a week, people are gonna be like, don't remember shit. But I just let them do the hard work and then add one little thing here and there. Um, I actually have one more drill, but we need a lot more time for that. I think that's gonna be a separate class. Because that's, a, that's like standard wrestling drill. But let's, let's just finish off with this one. And let's do a gi and a no gi area. And then we do as like a little king of the hill just for the fun of it. So you get to try it. So let's take all the no gi over here. All the gi over here. Then we do two couples in the middle. Two couples. And it's always the first person in the line that goes in. No debate. No debate. Oh, it's you, no, it's me, it's you, it's me. Always the first person in the line gets back in. So, gi over here, we make a line by the wall. No gi over here, line by the wall. Everyone just line up by the wall. Same here. We're just gonna go, do, go, do like three minutes, no more, I promise, maybe. So, uh, just two couples, two couples. And you decide if you wanna start in turtle or you wanna start in like here, right? You decide, depending on how comfortable you are standing up. So, uh, yeah, you two go here, no wait, actually, you go here, and then you get an opponent, you get an opponent. If you lose, you go back to the line, if you win, first person always goes in. All right, same here, two couples, just the first four people, please. Come on, just here. All right, let's try it, go. Three seconds back on the mat, or three seconds hook, will win. If you're really comfortable standing up, you can start standing up. Wrong, wrong, 
Um, that's, I, apparently, I thought this class would be like 20 minutes, but um, I, apparently I have more to talk about this than I had imagined. So, <laughs> um, But again, it's the first time I try to explain it, so, um, <clears throat> so it's a little bit interesting for me too. But I like to make these classes where it's kind of high energy, everybody's involved in it, and there is some cheering and some crying and some broken mm -hmm. hearts, and like a little, <laughs> little bit of everything, some drama, you know? Um, and, uh, and that's super simple. And very often, if I'm teaching a class, and maybe I'm just even a little bit tired, you know, some days, we're all human. I, I, I don't feel like just sitting talking about technique for 45 minutes and then rolling. Uh, then I just say, fuck it, guys, let's just put on, like, put on some like, loud classic rock or something, and then just go at it for an hour, and that's it, right? And that is a solid workout. You get good training that you definitely get something out of, right? You don't need to learn something new every single time, like technically, you just need to do some work, right? Um, so that's it. The two guard drills, one is just defending versus passing, the other one is sweeping and submitting versus defending. Yeah, those are the two guard drills. The two top versus bottom is one just squeeze and hold, and the other one is top versus escape. That's it. And then this one, which I sometimes refer to as the drill to end all drills, because that's literally what I just want. If, if I could decide, like, I would just do, have everyone do this and nothing else for every single class and not even roll, and uh, I think that would work really, really well. But they would also probably not come back because it's, unless they're like a super shape and on right? Um, but this is the most important one, I think. And maybe just do like 10 minutes every class or just once a week, just dedicate one class to this or something, or half an hour. And it also gets much easier as you start to get, develop more technique and kind of balance. In the beginning, everybody's just kind of flexing and not breathing. But once you've been doing it for a while, then you can actually have a lot of fun with it. Um, that's it. Time for dinner. Thank you for coming.